So the time has come to pull my harvest of ashwagandha roots. Now these plants I was growing as a annual here in zone 9b. Although they may be able to perennialize, I'm going to test that theory on a couple different plants. But you can see how the berries have this papery husk on them, somewhat like a tomatillo. And one of the telltale signs to let you know that the plant is ready to harvest is when the papery husk starts to turn brownish and dry out. Let me pull one of these off and show you what the berries look like. So here's what the berries look like, just a little red berry. And they actually are edible, but they're not tasty at all. Primarily what they're used for is to harvest seeds so that you can propagate the plant again. And you can see just one berry is loaded with seeds. There's at least 20 or so seeds in one berry. Some other signs that the plant's ready for harvest is that the leaves will start to dry up a bit. So I'm going to be pulling the majority of these plants out. And like I said, leaving a couple in the ground to see how they do overwintering. I'm expecting them to actually die back and then hopefully maybe reemerge next year. In subtropical, tropical climates, these plants can grow as perennials. And the roots are best harvested either the first year of growth or the second year of growth. After that, you lose a bit of potency. So I'm just going to push back a little bit of the mulch here and see if I can just pull this up. The soil over here has gotten really good since I've been amending it with the wood chips over the years. So I'm hoping the soil is loose enough so that I can pull the whole root mass out without damaging any of the roots. That worked out great. Now if you weren't able to just pull these out, you'd want to use a little digging tool like a hori hori and try to work the soil around the roots without damaging the roots so that you could pull the plant out. Wow, you can really smell the potency of those roots. And from what I understand, the more pungent the smell, the more potent the medicinal qualities. So ashwagandha has a long history of usage dating back thousands of years. It's most popular in Ayurvedic medicine. It's often referred to as Indian ginseng or winter cherry. And it's said to help reduce stress, relieve anxiety, help with sleep, increase energy, calm the mind, enhance libido, support your immune system, eliminate pathogens from the body, and the list goes on and on. Now, up until this point, I've been able to purchase my ashwagandha online, and that's been great. But I'm really looking forward to trying some of this homegrown ashwagandha. I'm planning on making some tea, making some ashwagandha powder, and some tincture. So stay tuned for that. So here's what I ended up harvesting today. Now I'm just going to chop off the root balls and separate those from the rest of the plant. Today I'm just going to be focusing on cleaning and preparing these roots for use. I'll be going over how to utilize the berries in a future video. So now that I have my root harvest here, I'm going to try to wash off as much of the dirt as I can. And then prune off all the different roots from the main core of the root ball. Now the main core can also be utilized, but it's going to need quite a bit of cleaning. There's a lot of different grooves where the dirt really wants to stay tucked in, so it should be carved down and probably peeled as well. I'm going to give this to my friend. I'll show it. Okay. Our harvest and this one I have to cook tonight. Sounds good. Thank you, Hart. Love you. Love you. All right, so now that we got the majority of the soil off of these roots, I'm now going to do a secondary cleaning. And what I'm using here is what's called a shower or a bath glove. I found this works really good for cleaning these roots off quickly and efficiently. And I'm just trying to get off any remaining soil. Don't need to scrub too much. So now I've placed my clean roots on the screen here to dry for a couple days. I'd recommend leaving this out in part sun to shade if it's really hot. And to help it dry out more quickly and efficiently, I'm going to cut these into smaller pieces. Traditionally they're cut into about 3 or 4 inch pieces. I'm cutting them down to as little as 1 inch pieces and the more stringy smaller roots I'm just leaving them as is. And there you have it, ashwagandha root harvest, cleaned and now on the dryer rack. 
Be sure to check back. I'll be doing an update video once these have completely dried out. I'll also be sharing with you in a future video how I go about harvesting and processing those berries so that I can save some seeds for future use. So that's it for now, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd sure appreciate a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, I'd invite you to subscribe to the channel. Also, I'd like to invite you to go check out my other YouTube channel, which is closely related to the gardening channel here. I show how I utilize a lot of the produce out of this garden. That channel is Plant Based Eats, and I'll include a link below this video in the description box if you're interested. Thanks for watching, and have a great evening. Talk to you soon.